Hi, in this short lesson we're going to talk a little bit about setting and setting's role in a short story. Uh, setting is one of the most critical aspects of any short story because it tells us so much about the characters. Oftentimes a setting is an antagonist to a character and uh, explains why a character behaves a certain way. Other times uh, the setting is described through a character's eyes um, and tells us a little bit about that character's state of mind. Um, so you always want to be, uh, pay attention to aspects of setting when you're reading a short story. Um, and some of the aspects of setting are the historical moment in time. So when does the story take place, right? Is it contemporary or does it take place in the 1800s or the 1500s? Uh, what country does it take place in? Uh, also, what's the social environment that it takes place in? What are the social conventions? Um, is it taking place during slavery? Is it taking place during women's rights? Is it taking place in a communist country or a capitalist country? All of those influence the way the characters behave. Geographic location, yeah, which country does it take place in? Um, and which state, which city? The climate, literally the weather. What's the weather like in the story? Um, is it nice and sunny? Is it dark and cold? Uh, those all uh, tell us a little bit about the characters and the actions in the story. What's the larger physical location in the story? Does it take place in a house? Um, or does it take place in a, a small town? What's the immediate physical location of the story? What are the rooms of the story? And what are the objects in the room in the story? How is a room furnished? All of that uh, tells us about the characters and oftentimes their behaviors. So let's take a look at setting in two short stories. One is Story of an Hour. So in Story of an Hour, the historical time period is around the 1800s, right? The story was written in the late 1800s, so um, we assume it probably takes place then or earlier. Um, so what would life have been like at this time? Probably pretty hard. There was no electricity. Um, probably no running water. Probably, um, well, definitely no cars. Um, so it definitely would have been a tough life. And the social conventions and the social environment of this time was much different than now, too. Um, women especially didn't have the same rights that they had today. They couldn't vote. Oftentimes women had to stay home. They couldn't work. Um, they were dependent on their husband in many ways. And a woman couldn't leave her husband uh, or it would be, you know, she would probably be ostracized uh, by the town. Um, and these are the sort of conditions that Mrs. Mallard was uh, facing in Story of an Hour. The geographic location of Story of an Hour isn't specified, but we know that the story takes place in one large physical location, right? This is Mallard's house. This is my best house. Okay, it's not very good. Um, so all the action takes place in the house, and that's very significant um, because the house is the domestic sphere of the woman and of Mrs. Mallard, um, and she literally never leaves the house. Nobody leaves the house except for Brentley Mallard. Um, and I think that tells us a lot about Mrs. Mallard's life and her uh, responsibilities. The immediate physical location is the room upstairs. Um, we get a description of the downstairs hallway a little bit, but we get a description of the room is probably the, the place that's described the most where she runs upstairs after she hears the news of her husband's death. And the room is described as not sort of a, a uncomfortable and unwelcoming place, but a very comfortable roomy armchair is in the room, and it's facing an open window, and this is where Mrs. Mallard sits and has her realization. Um, and that's kind of an odd uh, description of the room, where she just heard news of her husband. You would think that um, the room would be, um, you know, uncomfortable and dark to sort of reflect her state of mind, but no, it's described as comfortable and open. And outside the window, the climate is also not what you would expect. You would expect somebody who just uh, lost their husband to be looking into dark and stormy area, uh, cold and windy. Um, but instead, when Mrs. Mallard looks outside, she sees that uh, it's open and that the treetops are all a quiver with new life, uh, new spring life. And there's a delicious breath of rain and there's countless sparrows twittering in the eaves and there's blue sky showing here and there. Uh, it's really a, a beautiful uh, setting. She's, you know, uh, experiencing a kind of renewal and that sort of goes with her state of mind at that time. And this is something to always pay attention to. A lot of times the setting tells us about the character's uh, state of mind and what they're feeling, uh, especially the way they see the uh, setting. And in the end there's a couple of interesting objects, right? 
Mr. Mallard comes through the door, um, and he opens it with a latch key. And I think that's important because uh, she, he had been locked in the house the entire time. She literally couldn't have gotten out of the house, and he has to unlock the door in order to get in. Plus, he's the only one with the key. He's allowed to come and go, and he, uh, he can lock and unlock the house as he sees fit. He's also carrying a grip sack and an umbrella, and a grip sack is a luggage, basically. So uh, he's coming back, and he's, he's here to stay, right? He's bringing all of his, his items back, and he has the umbrella, so uh, he doesn't see the delicious breath of rain that Mrs. Mallard saw, right? Outside the window, uh, he carries an umbrella, which is, is much more gloomy. Um, he's not, you know, uh, he's not you know, uh, happy about, about the rain because he has the umbrella. So I think those are some significant objects towards the end. So those are some things you want to pay attention to. The location, physical location, the climate, like what's the weather like? What are some of the objects in the story? What do they tell us about the characters? Um, let's take a quick look at Sorrowful Woman, too. In Sorrowful Woman, the historical moment isn't really specified. However, it was written in 1971 and it appears to be contemporary based on the way the characters act, the social expectations of the characters. Uh, at the beginning of the story, the gender roles are traditional, right? The woman is putting away the warm dishes. It seems like she's responsible for the domestic activity, and the husband is dozing after her good supper. It seems like he probably doesn't help that much, um, so their relationship seems somewhat like uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mallard's. But it does seem more progressive, too, especially the husband, right? Um, when the woman, you know, stops doing her, her uh, domestic responsibilities and locks herself away, he's, you know, attuned to her. And he says he understood such things. He's willing to help in any way he can. We never see the man complaining. He just sort of picks up where she left off, taking care of the son and taking care of the house. Um, so I would say, yeah, probably around the 70s, uh, or, you know, was when the story took place. Like Story of Another, the larger physical location is the house. So here again we have a story that takes place entirely in the house. And I think that also tells us a lot about the woman's state of mind in Sorrowful Woman. Um, she's also never leaves the house, uh, just like Mrs. Mallard. Um, and all the action takes place there. And there are many smaller physical locations in the house, such as the woman's room and the girl's room and the kitchen. And we get some small description of these various locations throughout the story. Uh, the girl's room, I think, is really significant. It's described as painted white. The girl literally moves in and paints the room uh, sort of bright white color. And there's watercolors and fresh painted walls. Um, the girl is really the, the perfect, you know, housekeeper. I think that's part of why Mrs. Uh, the woman ends up hating the girl and requests that she gets fired eventually, because she's sort of uh, lively and domestic um, and paints the walls and, and, and does all the chores and does it, you know, in, a, in a, a lively kind of way. The woman's room is described as big and cold, and outside the window there are snow-ridden branches. So here again, the climate outside is telling us a little bit about the woman's state of mind. She's not like uh, Mrs. Mallard seeing, you know, delicious breath of rain outside and, you know, a uh, you know, nice spring renewal setting. It's sort of dark and gloomy and snow-ridden, and I think this tells us a lot more about what the woman is feeling. Uh, also, after the husband fires the girl, the woman literally moves into the girl's room, and it says she tries on new personalities, right? She tries to paint, and she tries to write poems, and she doesn't seem to be that successful at any of it, but I think it's pretty significant that she she literally moves into the girl's space and tries to do what the girl was doing and uh, is not able to. At the end of the story, the climate starts to change. The snow melts, and I think that whenever we have something like this, snow melting, and it starts to become spring and there are birds, you know, we, we know something's going to happen. Something's changing, so the climate tells us a little bit about the progression of action in the story. Um, the woman goes into the kitchen and realizes that objects have changed. He had bought some new dish towels. There was a different brand of butter. Um, so these sort of setting clues tell us that uh, things are a lot different, and uh, she seems sort of bothered by the fact that things are different, even though um, throughout the story she'd sort of retreated from her husband and son. Uh, and then this is where we get the climax of the story, right? We don't know that the woman is doing this. The man and the boy are out, and then they come back, and they realize that 
the woman had done this entire flurry of domestic activity. This is clearly the climax of the story. There are five loaves of warm bread, a roast stuffed turkey, glazed ham, three pies of different fillings, eight molds of the boys here at custard, a two-week supply of fresh laundered sheets and shirts and towels, etc. Um, she had gone and done all of this domestic activity, uh, you know, and then she dies. So um, that's got to mean something, right? Um, the fact that the climax is, is domestic. Um, and when we look at it like this, we see... She's trapped in the house. All the action takes place in the house. It's easy to dismiss her as crazy, but it seems like uh, she really just is unhappy with domestic life and retreats from it and tries to find something else and is never able to. And then at the end sort of uh, gives up, has this flurry of domestic activity, and then dies. Um, so you want to pay careful attention to the setting. Aspects of the setting often play a key role in revealing a character's motivations, why a character is doing or acting a certain way. Also, the setting tells us something, uh, or sometimes are symbolic, right? Um, they tell us what the characters are thinking, but often they represent things, right? I think the houses in both of these stories represent domestic life and um, the characters' inabilities to get away from that domestic life. Uh, very significant. So uh, pay close attention to those, uh, and uh, happy reading.